So hello everyone, I am Mark Fernandez, your MC External Vice President. Hi everyone, I'm Beatrice Isabel S. Dichinko, your MSc Auditor. And today our special guest is... Dr. Linda Tamesis, okay, from the Department of Pathology and uh, Laboratory, um, Clinical Laboratory. <laughs> okay. Why did you choose medicine po as your profession? I have a strange answer for that question. Okay, when I was in fourth grade, I failed two subjects. One was spelling and the other one was penmanship. And I remember going home to my father who was very upset with me and he said, Chicky, that's what he used to call me, my nickname. Either you have to learn how to spell and write properly or become a doctor. Because doctors write so bad that nobody knows if they spell correctly or not. <laughs> so I said, okay, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I thought it was a very challenging career. Um, there were no doctors in my family. No one actually in my family uh, had any kind of college. I was the first one. I'm the baby of the family. Uh, I was the only one that went to um, college. And while I was there, I had some friends who uh, were going to go into medicine. So I said, okay, sounds good. I'll try that. And my family was very supportive of me. Um, yeah, very strange. I really was not uh, born with the passion to be a doctor. Okay. My father always wanted me to be a school teacher. He thought I'd be a very good teacher and it looks like he was right. Okay, so uh, I chose medicine and and um, teaching. Is this what made you choose to practice teaching or practice in the academe as well, apart from being a clinician? It's the, the words of your father. That had some uh, some impetus for me to to be a teacher. But actually, when I finished medicine here in the Philippines, I fell in love and I decided to stay here in the Philippines. And up until my fifth year in the Philippines, I knew maybe five words in Tagalog. I had a small uh, clinic where I tried pediatrics and OB and medicine. It was a family practice, so anybody could come. And um, I realized that when people are sick, they don't want to have a problem with their doctor not understanding them. Okay. So, and they used a lot of idiomatic expressions in Tagalog that I wasn't really well versed with. So I said, I think even though my passion is really internal medicine, that was what I really wanted, geriatrics and internal medicine, uh, fate had other plans for me. Okay, so I, I uh, actually was convinced to go into teaching by Dr. Carrie Diaz, the late Dr. Carrie Diaz, who uh, was also part of my family clinic. And he said, why, why don't you try teaching? Okay, maybe that's what you were meant to do while you're here. And so here I am today. <laughs> so ma'am, given that you have a, sort of like two fields in medicine as a clinician and as an academician, was there ever a time or are there instances that you favor one over the other? Well, definitely it would have to be the academe over my clinical practice, okay? Only because after living here, Makakahiya, for more than 35 years, my Tagalog is still not good. Barok, talaga, <laughs> very bad. The only time I can really speak fluent Tagalog is when I get mad, so don't get me mad, okay? Because then you'll hear, nice, fluid Tagalog, <laughs> okay? And sometimes I dream in Tagalog too, but, um, yeah, so it, I would really have to favor the academe. Um, I am so happy to see my students succeed in life. Okay, when I see them pass the physician's licensure examination, when I go to them for a consultation, okay, that, that makes me so happy. Okay, so I get such fulfillment from teaching now that uh, I don't miss being a clinician. While now you're still teaching some students, what are your biggest concerns now that we've all adapted to, or well, still adapting, we're all still adapting to online learning? So what are your biggest concerns about that, Pongam? 
My biggest concern about that is the lack of clinical experience that our students are getting. FEU and RMF used to be known for their clinical expertise, okay, their skills. Uh, whenever uh, you're doing your PGI, uh, different schools are there, and they always call the FEU to do the insertion, to do the tube insertion, you know, any kind of clinical skill, they would call FEU because we knew how to do it. We were good, okay? Um, the clinical eye, I, I'm afraid that our students are not going to be able to get that clinical eye. And just um, the sense of belonging, I think, is, is something that is really very serious. You know, medicine is a contact profession, okay? I used to tell my students, if you're afraid to touch, to smell your patients, to touch your patient, then this is not the right field for you, okay? And now medicine has changed. You know, even the, the, the doctors now who used to touch and, and go close to their patients are now backing off, okay? Because they're afraid of, of getting these very, very serious d diseases. So um, this, is, this is something that I'm really concerned about and I really don't know how we're going to fix this. I really don't know. Perhaps we're going to have to invent more technology that will bring us closer to our patients. Yes, ma'am, I agree po. What do you miss uh, about teaching in person, ma'am? Oh, just being with the kids, just being with my students. Yeah, you know, I'm talking not about medicine, but talking about other things. You know, I used to love after class to mingle with the students and to ask them how they're doing and offer my help, okay? Um, just encouraging them, being close. You know, when you lecture to a group, you really don't know who is following and who is not. And there's always those students in a group that will need special attention, uh, a, a little bit of extra, you know, um, help uh, a, a few more pointers and you can't get that when you're online you really can't even if we tell everybody to turn on their videos i still can't see all of you at one time okay um and your reactions might be delayed okay because you are so zoned out too by sitting in front of a computer all day you, you don't even know if you understand or not until you take an examination Okay, and, and that's not good. Whereas when you're face to face, you can really pick up the students that are having difficulty, the ones that don't understand. You can see by their body language. Okay, and that's what I really miss. Okay. Yeah. Um, given that you're in this profession to teach, what are other struggles you have, either face to face or online? Oh. Well, I think when you're a teacher, you have to constantly update your knowledge, constantly update your knowledge. And right now, the big problem, I think, for teachers and for students uh, uh, together is this influx of fake information. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, even about the vaccines, are they good, are they bad? Uh, the medications, are they good, are they bad? One group will say good, one would say bad. And it's really so very hard to find the right source of information when you're bombarded with so much nonsense, <laughs> so much nonsense. Okay, so um, yeah, the speed at which knowledge is increasing, wow. It's, it's incredible. If a faculty who is well-versed in a subject is having difficulty understanding some of the new concepts, mas lalo yung student, okay, who doesn't have a strong foundation, how are they going to be able to tell what is truth and what is not? What is reasonable and what is not? I, I think that's our greatest problem right now. Just too much information, information overload. Um, now that you've been in this profession po for a long time already, ma'am, are you contented po or have you already reached your goals in life? Oh, 
I don't know. Uh, I think in life, you always have to have a challenge. You always have to have something. Okay, so um, my big challenge two years ago was trying to figure out how to deal with online teaching. Okay, so I, I think I, I met up with the challenge. Okay, I, I tried my best and, you know, my cahoots, my, my, my moodles, I, I think I'm keeping up pretty well. Although I always have to help, ask help from my coordinators, uh, my students to, to remind me to do things. But I, that was my challenge. And, and I'm, I think I'm, I'm pretty good with that now. How do you juggle being a professor? How do you juggle being a clinician and being a mother to all your children in school and a mother to your children in your abode? Uh -huh. Well, I think my kids are pretty well grown now. They're all doctors. They're all practicing uh, in their chosen fields. So I don't really have to worry too much about my children very much anymore. So I can focus more on the students. But I never had trouble. I, I don't think my, I hope my children were not jealous of me paying attention to others, <laughs> to my students and treating my students as my second family. I don't think so with all of my different uh, uh associations like the International Student Organization, they were always at my place. They were always considered my second family. Um, my, my husband was also their father. My my children were their brothers and sisters. So they never, they never had a problem. Uh, and I never had a problem. Uh, I, I think um, it's just part of my being that I, I like. I like people. I like being with people. Okay, I like families, so I, I like to be close to people. That's what keeps me going. Given the fact that a lot of students uh, nowadays are struggling uh, in this online setup, what uh, is the best advice po, that you can give to medicine students? Ooh, best advice for medical students. Find your focus. Find your focus. Okay, um, if this is what you really want, then you've got to focus. Okay, you've got to focus. In this world, there are too many distractions, too many distractions. Um, as much as possible, turn off your cell phones while you're on your Zoom class, as much as possible. Okay, find number two, so focus. Number two, find what makes your learning the easiest. There are some people who are tactile learners, like me, okay? If I do something, I learn it, okay? When I underline words that are written, I learn it better, okay? That's why before, if you looked at my notes, everything was underlined. I would write what I needed to know. I'd write it because I always felt that my hands were connected somehow to my brain and that the information would travel through there and stick in my brain, okay? So there are people like that. And if, if you're like that, then you have to do that. Um, one time, Dr. Makasi told me that she had a student who was an auditory, auditory learner. And what she advised to them was to record all the lectures and just listen. Just keep listening over and over and over again. And then that way that person learns. So the second advice is find out how you best learn, okay? If it's tactile, start writing your notes, okay? Start writing what you need to know. If it's auditory, auditory then keep on listening to the lectures over and over and over again. If you're more of a visual, okay, then watch your YouTubes, watch your um, read, if, if you're good by reading a visual like that, fine, do that. But you've got to find what makes it successful for you, okay? Not There's no one plan. There's no one plan. Don't follow other people's advice. Find what works for you. If sleeping makes it better for you, then sleep, okay? Then you can at least be conscious when you take your exam and you can think better. Okay, so find what makes it right for you. Uh, don't don't lose the passion. If you find out that you're miserable doing what you're doing, studying medicine, then maybe medicine is not for you. 
if it's making you miserable, don't continue. Be honest with your family, even if they're the ones that are supporting you and kind of pushing you to do it. If it's not in your heart, my gosh, do not suffer. Do not suffer if it's not for you, okay? So try to understand yourself. Yeah. Life is filled with failures, okay? Filled with failures. Uh, uh, I always tell them that if you fail on something, okay, uh, that does not mean that you have to give up, okay? Um, try something else. Something else might be meant for you. Just like with me, if, if I take myself as my own example, I wasn't able to practice clinically, even though I wanted from high school on to be a uh, to be in geriatrics, okay, to be an IM. I I just followed what God had in plan for me, okay. I never thought I'd be in the Philippines, okay. I tried for three years to get into a U.S. medical school, and I wasn't accepted, even though I had the grades even though I thought I did pretty good on my interview and I'm a pretty nice person, okay, I wasn't able to get in. Why? Because God had other plans for me. If I had just stopped then uh, and I lost sight of wanting to be a doctor, I wouldn't be here today, okay? So I came here and I found, I know, my second home. Uh, I found the love of my life. I have a wonderful family. Okay, because that is what God's plan was for me. Okay, it wasn't to be a doctor in the States. If you keep on getting failure after failure, look for an alternative. Okay, something in which it's still your passion, but different. See what opportunities are out there. Okay, if uh, you can't go one way, try the other way. Okay, uh, follow your dreams, but um, I, I don't know if this is being coherent or not. You have to follow your dreams, yes. But if you keep getting failure after failure after failure in one area, maybe that's not your da'ana. Maybe that's not your path. So you can you can alter your path a little bit, okay? And, and that's probably God's plan for you. If it doesn't work this way, then go the other way, okay? Just Just follow your heart in all of your decisions. Yeah, just follow your heart. Sometimes don't use your brain too much. Just follow your heart. And I think that uh, that that's the only way that we're really going to be happy in life. Pero po kung tatlong uh, bagay na napulot po sa ating interview today, no? First po is focus, no? Sabi niyo po kanina. Second po is figure out how you best learn and don't follow what other people are doing. Find what's right for you. And last po is don't lose your passion. And so, maraming salamat po, ma'am. This has been Mark Luis Fernandez, your MSc External Vice President. This is Isa Dichenko, your MSc Auditor and our beloved advisor. Bye, Linda Tomasis. <laughs> See you again soon. Hopefully, face to face. Yes, <laughs> Thank you, Pumam. And this has been Incendo Narratives That Inspire. Maraming salamat po.